next uh, speaker is going to, or our next interview is going to be someone who I just worked with in a breakout session, and that's Nikki McCord from McCord Consulting Group. I heard some great things about that session that it was really thought provoking. Well, it's one of these things that's kind of a, a passion play for us. Nikki, come on, come on in. Nikki, it's great to see you again. Great to see you again as well. So Carol was just asking. Hi. Carol was just asking what the heck it was we were up to. So, because <laughs> I wasn't there, unfortunately. Absolutely. Well, Jeff and I really wanted to understand a little bit better what the challenges and barriers were to beverage professionals in terms of diversity. And so our goal was to really have an opportunity to listen. And then hopefully from those conversations to eventually create a toolkit for companies to use to identify and to address some of these issues surrounding diversity. And can diversity be sort of any type of diversity, gender diversity, racial diversity, sort of religious diversity across the gamut or was there a focus specifically? I think we were mostly talking about racial diversity and, and you know it may sound weird to say that but if you look across the industry, you know, it's, it's always been, and, and I think it may be because of access to capital, there, there have been a good number of women entrepreneurs in the natural and organic industries. Um, it's had a, a fair track record just on face of uh, sort of being able to uh, maybe for, because for many people it turns into a second career yeah. of bringing sort of an experienced level of executive woman into the business. Now that's not to say that it matches up with, you know, with population profiles. No, but that's a wonderful thing about the industry. So that's why I wanted to just clarify a little bit for our viewers at home. But what we've been talking about is how do we make uh, people who've been working in natural and organic and traditional uh, food sources for decades, how do we get them invited to this party that is the growing financing of incursive brands? Absolutely. So what were some of the key takeaways from the session on how to sort of achieve those goals? So I think we talked about four different areas that really came out of the room that attendees said, these are some of the things that we feel are barriers and we can now look to find out how we can create tools to address these barriers. So one of them um, are retailers and really having retailers understand that the products that are even featured here at BevNet belong in a whole different um, type of stores um, across the country. And I don't know if you wanted to talk a little bit more about that retailers and, and what that really means. Yeah, so the idea is that there's a something of a profile of the of the of a black or a Hispanic consumer mm. that isn't necess that doesn't necessarily bear out anymore. Yeah. And while there's been a good change in mindset from retailers toward health and wellness, it hasn't yet filtered into uh, retailers who are in, who are traditionally in communities of color, even if those retailers are even there. And this is one of those things where uh, the natural products, the natural and organic products industry we think has the best of intentions, but we think has been growing so fast and focusing so hard at going 100 miles an hour that it hasn't incorporated diversity into its DNA. Mm. And I think that's a discussion that the industry would like to have given the opportunity to stick its head up a little bit and say, geez, I want to do this, and I hope it's not too late. Yeah. Another one of the um, topics that were identified by the group were employment opportunities as well. And so looking at employment opportunities from the ground up, 
from the internship level, making sure that college students understand what this industry is and how they can enter, enter this industry, all the way to the executive level and making sure that there's diversity in, in executive recruitment as well. And so understanding how to create a pipeline in order to recruit entry level all the way to executive um, with diversity in mind as well. If we move the needle, it creates a ripple effect. And we hope that we increase a pipeline, we increase opportunity, we increase willingness to take economic risk, both within minority communities and externally, so that people will look to those communities as places where they want to leverage their risk capabilities. In other words, to invest in a diversity of entrepreneurs. Absolutely. One of the third things that came out of this session was really inspiring companies to reframe the discussion and, uh, excuse me, inspire entrepreneurs as well to reframe the discussion in terms of diversity. And so really starting from the bottom up to make sure that entrepreneurs understand that diversity is very important to their business as well. So the other thing that I want to I want to make clear is that this isn't the only discussion we want to have, not just a breakout session at a BevNet Live, but we want to take this discussion across the natural products industry. We think that there are a lot more to be had. We think that there are a lot of objectives to be identified and to be worked towards, and that it needs to be a two-way street, that we need to recognize that this is or would like to be a culturally moral industry and we want to uh, support that you know uh, absolutely it's not just about identifying problems it's how are we going to fix them as well and I think that we're very committed to that yeah yeah so I do know that we're gonna turn it over to Ray Latif in just a minute so I want to make sure that he is floating around here and I don't see him. He's, he's right there in the wings. Okay, but he's waiting in the wings. So I'm afraid that Carol and I are taking off and you'll be joining us on our way out. But Nikki, I just want to say thank you for coming out and uh, helping me through that discussion. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. This has been an excellent opportunity and I look forward to working together in the future. That's great. Great.